there is an statement in astrology which is very important but the problem nowadays what i have seen is that in name of learning and teaching astrology mockery is happening no one is paying attention to things in the way they should be given importance for this particular reason many techniques are getting lost with every passing day for example there is a saying that moon is the seed lagna is the flower uh, lagna is the flower navamsha is the fruit and houses are the juices rasa taste this looks very simple the statement is very simple rather when you read it when you know about it it seems like someone have like you know wanted to give some poetical input into astrology that's not the point it is very important shloka so four things are mentioned here and when you pay attention to these four things your skill of analyzing a horoscope will increase multifold so let's understand them one by one and this order that is there moon ascendant navamsha houses this order is also very important the first important thing is seed from the seed comes the tree from the tree over the tree there is flower from that flower comes the fruit and you eat the fruit you get the taste so first and the foremost thing this is first and the foremost thing is moon chandrama nikhil grah virya bijam and many such shlokas are there which highlight the importance nowadays south indian astrology is very popular in south india navamsha was made alongside horoscope alongside the natal horoscope in north india moon horoscope was made alongside horoscope over the time the importance of moon horoscope is getting lost <laughs> looks like everyone thinks that ancient north indian astrologers were fools it's not the case it is said that moon is the seed what does the seed do there are two things about the seed the quality of the tree is dependent on the seed how the tree will be what tree it will be will it be a flower tree will it be a shrub will it be what what not that depends on the flower that depends on the seed in how much time the seed will become a tree is another important thing so moon basically tells you about two things how the tree will be secondarily timing very important in timing also for this particular reason when you see dashas in astrology most preferred dashas are nakshatra dashas nakshatras are ruled by moon you know that i always say it this is a prime reason that the most preferred dashas most popular dashas most widely used dashas most accurate dashas are based on moon be it vimshottari yogini ashtottari kala chakra or anything moon is very important in timing result as i told you when the seed will become the tree when the seed will sprout but surprisingly you see the irony is that though the complete dasha is calculated based on moon when you see the dasha when you analyze a horoscope with respect to what the dasha promises you completely ignore moon first point moon is the seed most important thing the first thing the first principle that you should understand that if the moon is powerful person becomes successful the horoscope is a good horoscope person lives a blessed life if a moon is weak person remains unsuccessful the horoscope is weak there are many miseries difficulties and challenges in the life of the person how will moon be powerful moon in kendras 1 4 7 10 houses moon in the 5th house moon in the 9th house will be a powerful moon moon aspected by benefic planet jupiter mercury venus will be a powerful moon 
moon expected by powerful planets moon expected by exalted planet planet in own rashi where guttam planet will be a powerful moon in this powerful planet retrogrades are not considered in fact if moon is influenced by only powerful planets by no other planets that means to say if every planet who is influencing moon is powerful in one way or other exalted own rashi mula trikona var guttam digbali etc then in that scenario it creates one of the greatest raj yoga in astrology the one who is having their moon influenced by only strong planets or even one strong planet creates great raj yoga and as a result of this raj yoga the person will be very successful very popular will contribute much into his profession will contribute to the betterment of the world by practicing his profession and all power fame status authority will be there to the new so this is the first and the foremost point before you see anything in horoscope you have to check the moon check the strength of the moon and only when the moon is powerful because moon will tell you how much to predict the 10th lord is you say exalted now this exalted 10th lord is supposed to give you fame so this fame will be well known in your area well known in your office well known in the world what international fame family level fame society level fame what on which level to predict moon decides this so it is very important that you assess moon first and keeping the analysis of moon in mind interpret the remaining of the horoscope in the same tone interpret the remaining of the horoscope in the same lines moon will become weak when it is in 6 8 12 houses specifically from Ash krishna moon of krishna ashtami krishna navami krishna dashami krishna ekadashi krishna dwadashi krishna triyodashi krishna chaturdashi krishna amavasya shukla pratipada shukla tritiya shukla tritiya shukla chaturthi shukla panchami moon of these tithis are weak moon expected by mars saturn rahu conjoined by mars or saturn rahu is a weak moon moon in ashlesha magha jeshtha mula ashuni revati nakshatra that is moon in gandant is a weak so you have to consider all the factors the house of the moon the rashi of the moon the planets influencing the moon and have to decide whether moon is powerful or not regarding rashi as you may know moon is exalt moon becomes exalted in taurus debilitated in scorpio and owns the sign cancer along with this moon being a female planet will be powerful in female signs so other than that moon is also powerful in capricorn and pisces as well right so you have to consider see two factors will always be there house and rashi will always be there along with this the tithi condition that i have added right the tithis that i have told you in which tithis moon becomes weak in remaining tithis moon becomes strong this is needless to say now this much intelligence so you are having so tithi of the moon house of the moon rashi of the moon will be there these are already three factors based on these three factors you can decide whether moon is powerful or not even if two factors are otherwise house is good rashi is bad rashi is good house is bad you can use the third factor to decide for this particular reason i always say that when you are going to decide something astrological principles that you have to use should be odd numbered because if you use odd numbered principles for example right now we are using three principles there will not be a tie otherwise there can be a tie additionally to this planet conjoined with moon if any planet aspecting moon if any should be considered and that aspect or conjunction should be considered with respect to this planet is a benefic planet or a malefic planet this is not considered with respect to this planet is friendly to moon or not or inimical to moon or what right but based on the the planet being benefic or malefic so based on these five factors you have to decide whether the moon is powerful or weak and depending on how much powerful it is or how much weak it is you have to set the tone of your horoscopic analysis and until and unless you do this your estimation of how strong or how weak how good or how bad the result will be will always be wrong my only endeavor in all of my courses and all of my videos and everything that i produce is to uplift the level of astrology that people practice right hence i try to teach such rules tell you about such principles which will take your level of practicing astrology take your level of predictions a level up 
the important thing that need to be understood here the horoscope from moon now you know moon is the seed so you say i i will take a standard example of 7th house what do 7th house from moon do 7th house is seed 7th house is a standard example you can apply it to any house applied 5th house 4th house 8th house any house whatever you want to do right you just have to take the signification so let's say marriage we are talking of marriage or we say we are talking of childbirth so regarding seed what is the potency first of all seed is desire is the person having desire moon controls desire also because all the desires come from mind only so do you wish to produce a child do you wish to get married the person does he desire to get married or not for example you know the horoscope of swami vivekananda i say graveyard of astrologers you give horoscope of swami vivekananda to any astrologer who don't remember the horoscope and they will do all those predictions which are never true in the horoscope of vivekananda some will say he is married some will say he is this he is that it's not true at all what is the difference analyzing the 7th house 7th lord of vivekananda you cannot reach to a conclusion until and unless you analyze the 7th house from moon for vivekananda and see whether he actually wants to get married or not so the first seed for anything in your life is desire so you check different houses from moon that will tell you what what, what one desires if fifth house lord from moon fifth house lord from moon or is weak or fifth house from moon is afflicted fifth lord is weak fifth house is afflicted is the same thing negative result fifth house is having strong fifth lord is powerful fifth house is having strong influences power influences of powerful planet influences of benefic planet translates into same thing good result right this is the basic standard you know that fifth house from moon is powerful one wishes to have children only after one will have a desire to have children they will produce it so that is the first and the foremost thing this comes with respect to seed another point is how will the marriage be or how will the childbirth be so from the process of seed seed will have germination then it will convert from the seed to a tree and this process of development how that process of development will be talking of fifth house from moon when the person have decided to have a child for how much time he will have to try for the child how the when the conception will happen because moon is also for timing this is my third one when the conception will happen how will the period of pregnancy go when the child will born and how will be the child from birth to adolescence becoming a tree child become adolescent child become adult now he became a tree who can give you fruit before that he cannot give you fruit he is interdependent on you up to this level the complete analysis is from moon talking of seventh house whether you wish to marry is the first point that comes in seventh from moon whether one wishes to marry or not if one wishes to marry then when they will find the life partner how they will find the life partner and how the process from the pursuit of finding the life partner to meeting the life partner to being in talks with the life partner up to the marriage ceremony how the process will be how the process will go how many ups and downs will be there etc etc should be analyzed from moon for a particular example if seventh from moon is afflicted by malefics in this scenario what happens the person wants to marry they get into relationship with people also but break of engagement and all of such things happen because the the seed is not able to fructify himself into a tree when seventh house from moon is afflicted the seed of marriage is not able to fructify into a tree second most important point is timing in how much time this seed because this depends on the quality of seed for how much time you will have to water it how many seasons how many days how many months it will take to become a tree and then how fast the tree will grow this all depends on the seed right so when you are using dasha antar dasha you should essentially when you are going to time marriage along with checking the seventh house from ascendant and all of that also check planet influencing seventh house from moon seventh lord from moon planet aspected in 
planets situated in seventh house from moon the dasha antar dasha of these planets will play very crucial roles in meeting the people you are likely to get married and advancements in relationship advancement in talk which ultimately leads to marriage so i always say one thing when you want to find about wife you check seventh house from ascendant when you want to find about girlfriend and the talks to the lady before getting married actually that you have to check from moon this becomes very very important this is the particular reason our sages have told to check the transit from moon right because moon indicates timing moon strongly indicates timing moon have high control over timing when things will happen after moon comes the lagna now lagna is flower normal ascendant to you all know what does it mean in different things so basically astronomically you only calculate the ascendant at at the birth time for the place where the native is being born what what rashi is in the eastern direction that is the ascendant what this do this decides what rashi falls in other houses you only calculate the rashi falling in lagna and other rashis you keep in order of aries taurus gemini cancer leo virgo libra scorpio sagittarius capricorn aquarius pisces in this order you keep so which rashi goes into which house is decided by the ascendant and here the point by ascendant you should understand house lord house lord is the fruit sorry house lord is the flower what is the flower flower is the first germination right so once the tree have grown up it will give you flower and that flower will give you estimation of how many fruits you can expect out of it so say in the matters of marriage what is the flower flower is how the marriage will be will it be a love marriage will it be an arranged marriage the marriage will be at what place the marriage will be grand or the marriage will be discreet marriage it will be a court marriage it will be a public function it will be what take it into child flower is the child when growing up how much good educates and manners he will have a child who listens to you a child who obeys you a child who respects you when anyone will see that child they will say what good manners his parents have taught him so basically by looking at the child they are praising you that you are a good parent so this show, this is flower flower is what flower gives you fragrance flowers are soothing to look at this gives you mental peace mental satisfaction mental happiness you say your wife how beautiful your wife is from which family background the wife comes from how intelligent the wife is what is the educates etc of the wife how she behaves with the world this is all this all should be seen from seventh house lord so i always teach everything about life partner from the seventh house everything about the person does the child is obedient etc i have told earlier is the child obedient he listens to you he pays respect to you does he have good manners or not this all fifth lord will indicate and this you are talking from ascendant fifth lord from ascendant seventh lord from ascendant so this way what happens two people having almost same combination because what will happen someone born today at 9 pm 9 am someone being born tomorrow at 9 am there will be very little difference in their horoscope the difference of moon will be there so in this two people who are born 24 hour apart will everything be same moon will change and because moon is changing seed itself is changing because the seed is changing things are entirely different so some get a beautiful life partner from love marriage some get a beautiful life partner from arranged marriage etc etc this thing is changing right so until and unless you understand things in depth you and you take you use such such important techniques the analysis always remains incomplete the analysis remains scanty a children and enthusiasts who have just learnt astrology they doing a prediction they analyzing a horoscope plus a plus a serious learner of 
astrology doing analysis of a horoscope and doing prediction there should be some difference that midas touch have to be there and these techniques give you midas touch so you know that this is someone who knows the science very well right so uplifting the level of your astrological practices what all this technique aims at this is my prime purpose right so you understood about the lagna and the lagna should be interpreted as different house lords once again when it comes to timing when it comes to timing if someone is asking that sir i am expecting my wife my wife is expecting to get an award my wife is expecting to get owners when will that happen if you have to time it this is flower your wife have got a award very prestigious award so people people in your office will talk see his wife have got such a great award his wife you know his wife is so beautiful his wife creates such a his wife is such a good musician his wife is such a good dancer his wife is such a good painter so all of these things if you have to time when my wife will get award when my wife will start their start her job you know when my wife will get a promotion all of these things if you have to time you have to time it using the seventh lord rashi lord of the seventh lord planet aspecting the seventh lord planet situated with seventh lord will indicate all of these things the next is navamsha navamsha analysis so you know a uh, navamsha analysis concept is very simple you take the house lord you take the significant you check them in navamsha there is no concept of house in navamsha seventh house of navamsha leave it right leave it out seventh lord of rashi chart in which navamsha they are going into venus the karaka for marriage in which navamsha he is going into what is this this is fruit so your wife is a good painter you say your wife is beautiful your wife is having good etiquette your wife is having good behavior how do you benefit from that the good behavior of your wife makes her calm because she is calm and composed your life is tension free because your wife is calm and composed she can take care of almost everything you don't have to worry versus you have a life partner who cannot do anything all by themselves you have to intervene you have a husband whom you cannot leave alone in a party because you know he will go on and flirt with some in this scenario what have happened even though the seventh lord as per seventh lord from ascendant as per their divan placement is giving you a beautiful life partner but because the seventh lord goes into a bad navamsha you cannot enjoy the beauty instead the fruit is very bad because of the life partner because of the husband being beautiful he flirts with many women he is very susceptible to go into extramarital affairs this adds to your worry this is the fruit right this is the fruit for example fifth lord and jupiter if if you have to choose fifth lord jupiter is secondary fifth lord is primary you check the navamsha of the fifth lord which rashi fifth lord goes to in navamsha it is an exaltation rashi debilitation rashi friendly rashi numical rashi does this navamsha belong to a benefic planet does this navamsha belong to a malefic planet based on this scenario you analyze that your child which is very well mannered who is well learned who have all of these things will he secure a good job with all of these qualifications when he secures it from that job security he will be settled in his life and he will not disturb you or he will get settled in his life and will occasionally help you also or all of these things will be futile he will be difficult securing a job and you will have to constantly intervene in his life out of these three conditions where it will go is the fruit that navamsha tells you right so you say the 10th lord is very good in divan chart Tenth Lord is very good in D one chart. That basically means you are popular. Tenth Lord is exalted in D one chart. You are popular. People know you. But with this popularity, can you contend for an election and will you win? 
If you want to check it, you have to check 10th Lord in Navamsha. That will tell you whether you can enjoy the fruit of this flower also. This flower, this is like you are very popular in your area. You are very popular in your profession. So 10th Lord is exalted. It is the flower. You are very popular in your area. Everyone comes to consult you. Seeks your opinion. Now, can you, you know, work on this popularity and get a political position out of it? Navamsha, you have to check. And lastly, the juice, the rasa, the taste is the house. Now, what about the house? This house, we are talking the house of D1 back. So what we have done, we have done the complete analysis on D1 chart, went a bit to Navamsha, way back to D1 chart again. This is what is the modus operandi of predictions. Right? Analysis from D1 completely went to Navamsha for a bit, came back to D1, continued the analysis. This is how it is. This is how it works. Those who have sufficient practice in astrology know how things work. Right. This is the technique. Right. Rasa. <clears throat> now, what do you mean by bhava? Rashi in the Bhava. Because Bhava is fixed. Every person is having a seventh house. What is different is the Rashi in the seventh house. And Rashis have a lot of attribute. Male, female, head strong, head rising, hind rising, etc. Multiple significations are there and I almost have a playlist on Rashi significations and how to decode it. Right, So that playlist you can watch. And there is much information on Rashi that I have produced on my YouTube, which is not available anywhere else. That you have, you surely have to check it out. Now this taste. So you say, continuing the example of profession, 10th house. The 10th Lord is powerful in D1 Jant. It have gave you fame and popularity. You are popular between people. It is good in Navamsha also. Because of this popularity, you competed into an MLA election. You see, you contested into an election and you won into that election also. So that is a good fruit that you have gone. Now you have went into power. Now, what is the taste of that fruit? When you went into this power, you enjoyed this power. Or you have used it to make an actual change in the society. You have achieved something for which people will remember you for generations to come. This have to be decided from the house. And by house, I mean Rashi in the house. The nature of the Rashi and influences on the house. In the third step, you were checking the house lord. Sorry, in the second step, you were checking the house lord. Tenth lord, which Rashi the tenth lord goes into, which planets are with the tenth lord, which planets are respecting the tenth lord. In the fourth step, you are checking Rashi in the tenth house, planets in the tenth house, plant influencing the tenth house. Will you do something that generations will remember that will create an actual change? House will tell you. In the example of marriage, Moon have told you whether you want to get married or not, what difficulties will come before marriage. Seventh Lord have told you all about the life partner, the background of the life partner, how you get married, it is love marriage or not. Right, The life partner comes from what type of family, what is their mentality, what is not their mentality, etc. etc. The Navamsha of the seventh Lord, seventh Lord in Navamsha have told you the mentality, the personality, the family background, the thinking of the life partner have contributed to your life in how many ways, what it have done to you. Now the Rashi in the seventh house will tell you after all of this contribution, what have happened? For example, seventh Lord is connected to Jupiter. Your wife is intelligent. This seventh Lord goes to a good Navamsha. Because of this intelligence, she can handle things very well. She can tackle things very well. You don't have to worry about her. Now you come back to the Rashi in the seventh house. If the Rashi in the seventh house is good, planet in this Rashi is good, planet influencing this Rashi is good. Then because your life partner is intelligent and she can manage multiple things on her own, she also takes care of your multiple things also. So you can actually give a few responsibilities to her, which she will take care of or which he will take care of 
and you don't have to worry. So your burden is lessened. On the other hand, if the Rashi in the seventh house, planet influencing the seventh house, situated in the seventh house, aspecting the seventh house is not that good in that scenario. What is happening? Life partner is intelligent because the seventh lord is powerful. It goes into a good anavamsha also. So life partner is able to take care of things all by themselves. But because the Rashi in the seventh house influences over the seventh house are bad, they only take care of their own things. If you give some responsibility to them, either they don't do it or they cannot do it because their specialization is only limited to their own areas. That cannot help you in a way. That cannot help your children and your family in any way. They can manage things very well, but only those things for which they are completely responsible. To. If they try to give some of your work to them, it may not be possible. It will not be possible. So this is the penultimate result. This is the taste of it. When all of this thing is happening, ultimately, how it is benefiting you or not benefiting you, how you are gaining out of it or losing out of it is what the house decides. Right? So these are the four basic and essential parameters of analysis. If you use them in your predictions, if you use them in your analysis of horoscope, your skill of prediction will increase many fold. Then you will analyze like a professional seasoned astrologer analyzes. And the depth of the analysis will be so great that it can actually help people. Other than that predicting like you are lazy, uh, your husband will not be happy, your husband will be ugly. What purpose it leads? Nothing. And so this is what amateurs do. And amateur astrology. Because Saturn is there in the seventh house, this may happen, that may happen, that is such. The purpose of technique is to use astrology in such a way that helps the life, that help that you know helps the person improving their life, making good decisions, and actually understanding what is going to happen, something which is useful, in which this technique will help you a lot. And along with this, this technique have also helped you in understanding one more thing: the uses of divisional charts. So analysis goes into analysis from Rashi chart, go to the concerned divisional chart, take some cues, take some hints, come back to the Rashi chart. Use another technique, combine all the three step and the previous step of moon and by synchronizing and compressing what you have analyzed from all these four factors, make the prediction. Is the setup in which the divisional chart should be used. So it also strongly hints at how to use divisional chart. 